Welcome back, Shaloners. Well, as promised, I wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive into something we touched on yesterday's video, Madonna. Right, I don't think we've ever done a video about Madonna. Oh, we have. Did we do one about her and Sean Penn? I don't know, who cares? Madonna. Girl, what's going on? Madonna is 64 years old, okay? And behaving like she's an unhinged TikTok person. Well, I mean, she is on TikTok and she is rather unhinged on all social platforms. So, okay, for me, Madonna is the ultimate cautionary tale of what I do not want to become. Somebody who is like an it girl and beautiful and really cool, not just trendy, but someone who set the trends, who is now, I'm just gonna say it, a clown. Like we're watching her, but we're not watching with her, we're watching at her. Do you know what I mean? Madonna was spotted at New York Fashion Week booty dancing, I don't know what that means, twerking, who even knows, like giving weird grindy lap dances, at the Laquan Smith show, she's dating like some 22-year-old light skin. All she dates are light skins, Latin, black, whatever. And I just the face to the face tuning of her photos is we I we have got to talk about this. We've got to talk about this. How do we avoid this fate? When does it start? Like when does the pendulum swing and you're like, oh my God, here I am? Because it creeps up on you. How do we grow old gracefully? And not just gracefully, because that's like, she's dying with slow, slow poise. No, how do we stay like truly hot and truly young at heart as the clock ticks on? You know, like as time moves forward, how do we kind of reinvent ourselves, if that is what we need to do, and stay cool and relevant. What is that even defined as? We're gonna break it all down, but before we do, join me in the Shalantourage. It is our exclusive little corner of the internet where you're gonna get access to Telegram chats with me, all of our sexy session um, tutorials that I did. You can watch those forever. A bunch of exclusive videos per week, exclusive podcasts, long form blog content where I break down all sorts of advice for you guys and psychological studies. And did I mention Telegram chats where we all get to chit chat? It's super fun. Also, there's a new trip. We are going back to Mexico. Next year, we are going to Cancun. It's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be kind of a party trip. It's not gonna be like mellow on the beach. I mean, we are gonna mellow out on the beach, but this is gonna be like a really fun girls getaway. Like picture a bachelorette party where you don't have to be like bride tribe and wear some like ridiculous matching outfits. I'm not the bride. No, you're all the bride. We're all the brides. Okay, it's gonna be fantastic. And if you book now, you can save $200 with an early bird. So go ahead and click the link. All right, Madge. Oh God. Oh. I just, I need to open up her Instagram if I dare. So you guys might not know, and this like truly saddens me. You might, oh. Uh, this is like Aubrey O'Day level Photoshop. I would pull up Aubrey's, but she's blocked me. Okay. You guys might not know Madonna like in her heyday. And like, I didn't, you know, I was like a baby, but she was like always there and she was always reinventing herself or coming out with things like her music videos, like launched a thousand trends. Like I really cannot overstate her impact. Like now we look at her and she just like this cringe throwback, like, oh, like, the ultimate, like, I'm not a, a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. She's just trying so hard to stay relevant and just not rolling with the punches of getting older. But like for so long, she was so fucking cool. Like her body, you, her body, look at this thing. Her tits were enormous and natural, and but she had a six pack. And I'm like, oh my God, like she was stunning. She had this white milky skin. She was just so beautiful. And she was so incredibly like sexual. And that was like very, that was new. She would talk about how she liked guys to go down on her for an hour and a half. She's like, I'm not giving a blow job or a turn. She was trying different things. She was a good actress. Like she was doing so much like her, she was like the precursor to Jennifer Lopez, you know, but J-Lo, who's like, what, 53, you know, is 10 years behind Madonna, who's 64. And it's like where J-Lo went right, Madonna has gone wrong. There's plastic surgery. There is, did I mention the face tune? We need to look at that. Look at this. And more than, more than all of these things, 
It's just the refusal. I don't want to say to like go gently into that good night because listen, I know a lot of celebrities say this and certainly I'm not trying to invalidate their experience, but there's, they're like, you know, there's like the last fuckable day. Amy Schumer did that sketch. Like you've lived your last fuckable day. Like Julia Louis-Dreyfus. That like society expects you to just vanish and they, they vanish you. Like they just stop paying attention to you. People stop flirting with you. They stop speaking to you with respect. They just start ignoring you. My mom has said this. Her friends have said this and they're smokes. Like these women are like smokes. So you know that this is a real thing. And I'm not saying like, Madonna has just failed to do that. So like, yikes, like you just need to kind of go die now. No, what I'm saying is if we don't want to suffer that fate where we're just invisible, listen, it seems like there's two weird choices right now. There is, I'm gonna cut my hair into a, a pixie and let it go kind of gray, kind of salt and pepper, like that that mousy grayish. It's not brown, it's not gray, it's just who even knows. Um, I'm going to sell dream catchers in Martha's Vineyard, and I'm going to refer to my vagina as a yoni. There's that lane. And then there's Madonna's lane. Surgery, too much social media, fucking a lot of younger guys. You know? <laughs> and like, isn't there something in between? And I think that's why we all stand Jennifer Lopez, because there is, like, look at her. Look at Gwen Stefani. I mean, Gwen Stefani without the Photoshop, she's had a lot of work done. You're like, oh, Kate Beckinsale, Kate Blanchett, like Julia Louis-Dreyfus. These are women who you're like, that woman is not even close to her last fuckable day. And yet she's youthful without this Madonna-esque, like overdoing it but she's mature without being like veering into Yoni Dreamcatcher territory, right? How can we do that? How can we find that cool path to coolness and avoid the Madonna fate? What strikes me is always when I look at Madonna, oh my God, look at this photo. Look at this. Don't post a picture like this. this. And this, I'm saying, don't post this. It has nothing to do with your age. Don't post this at 18. Don't post this. Yikes. POV, I'm at the gyno. Oh boy, it's a gallery. That's sexy. That's cute. I, you know, for any age. Okay. But like, here's my vag. Oh dear. Okay, like I was saying, when I look at Madonna's pages and her life, it all just seems so fucking tiring because it's so obvious that at some point the pendulum has swung and she's no longer innovating, she's chasing. And for someone like her who sets the trends, historically she has, to now be blindly chasing them, like what is the music that's cool? What's the lingo that's cool? What am I wearing? What am I posting? What apps am I using? What filter? Like. It's so, it, that to me maybe encapsulates the sadness. It's like you were the leader and now you were the follower. And truly, I think it would be better if you weren't in the race at all. You know, if you had reinvented yourself in a different way. We talked about this in the last video when we touched on this. Like, I don't know if you guys remember when she was dating Guy Ritchie. I do, because Guy Ritchie, oh, he's such a stud to me. He's like, oi, and he's done these, you know, British like gangster movies and he just seems so cool. And I remember him talking about how he hit on her at a party. And he's like, you know, she's a flesh and blood woman, just like everyone else. And a boyfriend was ignoring her. And I just go up to her. I'm like, oh, you deserve better than that bloke. And she was like, and that always stuck with me. It's like, that's exactly how an alpha male approaches an alpha female. You're, you know, you're just, you're no different than anyone else. I'm going to treat her like everyone else. Everybody's so afraid of her. Oh, how am I going to approach her? I went up to her and said anything I would say to any other chick at a bar. And for someone of her stature, and we can identify with this. We're the bad bitches. We're the top of the pyramid. To have someone approach you with that casualness, but also confidence is like oh, magnetic. And so I always stand their relationship. And she like moved out to the British countryside and she adopted this faint yet unmistakable British accent. I'm a, I'm a proper British lady. It was like weird and it would come and go and people were like, huh. She's also a real twat to interviewers. Like every interview I have seen, and I know people who've interviewed her, they're like, she's a see you next Tuesday. She is, she is so demeaning to people. Like I remember I watched one interview with her 
and she said she was drinking tea and this was her post Guy Ritchie phase but we'll go back to that in a second and she said to the interviewer she's like I don't know the interviewer said something about her whatever it was and Madonna's like that's very reductive look it up and the chick's like I went to Yale I don't need to look it up. I know what reductive means but that's what she does she talks down to people and I've noticed this from a lot of celebrities who ascend to this really high level of fame but they never had a good education like they maybe dropped out of high school or something like that. They have this chip on their shoulder about it and they are so fucking sanctimonious and pretentious that they like are always like bombastic and puffing themselves up. And her British chick phase, oh my God, was at the height of that. Oh my God. She was so smug and picture Meghan Markle dialed up to 100. I mean, you have never seen anything like it. But yet I thought this could be a really cool reinvention for her, you know? to not age gracefully, but I mean, yes, like to age in a different way that had a different goal. Because priorly it was like sex, sex, sex. And for her instead to be like, no, my focus now is sophistication. My focus now is refinement, poise, gentility, art, poeticism. You know, I thought, wow, this is gonna be really cool to watch her kind of in embrace the second act and really inhabit this new persona and dial up traits that were never priorly that important to her. Well, they, they didn't become important to her because she torpedoed that relationship. She could not, then this is the things Guy Ritchie has, has said, like she couldn't just be a person. She had to be in the spotlight. She had to have the paparazzi chasing her. She had to be making headlines. Like even though her time as the young it girl was fading just because that is how fame goes you cannot be that young ingenue forever there's gonna be the britney spearses the dixie d'amelios this is how it goes you know and if you don't like that go work at h&r block where you could be the head bitch in charge your entire career great she couldn't let it go she couldn't let it go and now we see how exactly right he was based on what she's become. I mean, she had this crossroads where again, she could have amplified parts of herself that were under, not underdeveloped, but undershown, you know, or like just not what people thought of her. And truly, I think she would have been so much more fascinating had she gone in that direction. Like, oh my God, you went from like the cone bra and the grinding and you're wearing like a nun's outfit and you're fucking a priest, whatever it was she was doing, to like, you're growing vegetables and you're riding horses and you're throwing balls and you re, re renovated this castle like that's fucking crazy like that's so interesting that like you can be both of these women like you can be the bad bitch but you're renovating a castle and growing rutabagas mm, mm, mm. i think that that duality existing in one person is fascinating what isn't is this Every hall on Instagram is doing this. I do this. You know, like this isn't, this isn't interesting to me. And it's, it is interesting that she doesn't know that. Like she was the most clever, famous person. Like she knew the fame machine before. Without Madonna, there'd be no Lady Gaga. There'd be no Kim Kardashian. Like she knew how to manipulate audiences and get headlines and be sensational. And it's like she just shit the bed. Like, this is so unoriginal, you know? Like I said, the, the master has now become the student. Like, she's chasing these things that every basic in the world is doing. And I'm like, you know better than this. You know this fame game. You invented it. How are you fucking this up so bad? And I really, you know, oh, look at this face too. This ain't what... She's got this tight face, for sure. But at 64, you shouldn't. You don't need to look like this triangular 23-year-old, this trapezoidal Gen Z. I really think she would have been fascinating looking, beautiful, aging. Get some Botox, get your filler, get a little lift, that's okay. But this is so overboard. It's like, she had such great bone structure. I don't know, I could just go on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm talking too much about this. I'm talking too much about this. Clearly, this is hitting home. And it is, it's hitting home for me. I have made no secret about how fucked up I am when it comes to aging. My family drilled into me one message. Youth 
is currency. Spend it while you have it because it will run out. The world was made to be wooed and won by youth. Winston Churchill said that. I have that memorized. There's a reason. I have always been keenly aware of the power of youth. When I was nine, I didn't want to be 10. When I was 20, I didn't even want to be 21. I always say I'm trans chronological. Fuck, fuck you if you don't like it. I identify as 26. I identify more. I identify more with a 26 year old than I do with a chick in her 30s. Cause they like houses and, well, I have a house, but like kids and my husband and, you know, dioramas and like signs, my kids holding a sign in front of a door. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm ready to eat the weekend. Okay. So. <laughs> So youthfulness is something I think a lot about, not just in terms of how we look, you know, because I pay doctors for that. I pay, I pay a doctor. Do you know, here's something that's terrifying. You can go to like a really top plastic surgeon, which I do. I don't have any fillers in my face. Now this is my analog face. I told you guys I dissolved them like a year ago and uh, I'm not loving it. I love parts of it. I'm not loving all of it. Anyway, do you know that your temples hollow? People get filler in their temples. Because when you're younger, they're more puffed out. I mean, there is an endless amount of things to stress about in terms of aging. It's fucking crazy. Your lip drops like kids. You can see more of their teeth. That's more youthful. Think of Miley Cyrus, that little buck tooth thing, right? <sighs> so I think about not just youthfulness in terms of looks, because listen, this what I do being on camera, like it matters. But also in terms of spirit, we know people who were born old. They were just born old. One of my best friends, she was born elderly. She's a thousand years old. When I think of youthfulness, if I could encapsulate it in two adjectives, I think of people who are curious and unafraid, right? Because think about the elderly, boomers, whatever. They're not curious. All this fucking music, rah, what does this mean? And they are afraid. Who are all these immigrants? Oh God, grandpa, you were an immigrant. You know, they're very rigid. You think of rigidity. And when you think of youth, you think of they're flexible. They're hearing other opinions. They're listening to new music. They're trying new vocabulary, new clothes, new foods. They're traveling. They're taking in a ton of data. Why? They don't have a fully formed sense of self yet. And so they're constantly taking in data. First, I mean, partly because their social inclusion needs are the highest when we're young. They peak in adolescence. Well, I mean, they peak kind of for like 10 years, but. And so they're trying, they're shape shifting a lot to see what gets them the best social response. And as a result, they're taking in a lot of data. Maybe I do like pho. Ooh, maybe I like tapas. Maybe I like high-waisted jeans. What does everybody else like? So they're trying, 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 trying. Now, of course, there's downsides to this in that you are shape-shifting. I don't want to go back to being 23. I was, bleh, you know, but I really try to retain that malleability and that emotional elasticity in terms of curiosity and data gathering. I really try to be a yes person. Ooh, should we go get pho? I can't call it pho, but it's spelled pho. Okay, fine. Oh, okay, let's try it. You know, even if I think I'm not gonna like it, it's like, what's it gonna fucking hurt you? It's one meal out of your life. Turns out I do not like it because it's stuffed to the gills with cilantro, which is the devil's leaf, it's disgusting. But I tried it and now I have data about what I do and I don't like. Rigid people, no, they know it already. They know it already. My rigid friend has no idea that she's rigid. Most rigid people don't think so. Have you ever heard someone describe themselves as rigid or fearful or uncurious? No, of course not. But it's important that we look at these people in our lives and around, you know, in our periphery and reverse engineer. Okay, it's like I look at that person, I'm like, holy fuck, I don't wanna be you. Here I am in Kohl's, I'm just returning an Amazon order and I'm looking at you and I'm looking at who you are or who I imagine you are, because I don't know who this person is. What is it about you I don't want to be? And it's not about shitting on this person in Kohl's, you know, Linda's doing the best she can. But I try to reverse engineer because for me, it comes back to that person seems old. Not just how they look, but in spirit. What, why? What markers are there? And then I work backwards. Okay, you can tell she's been dressing like this since 92. Okay. I'm gonna like put that in my little like filing system. Like I really need to get out of my style rut because maybe that's what's kicking up for me today. I'm like, look at that fucking outfit, Linda. 
Maybe that's a marker to me, hey, you keep buying the same things over and over again, let's branch out, let's try some new fashion. What's it going to hurt? It's like that bowl of disgusting cilantro infused pho that I had, pho. What's it gonna hurt? You try something, you don't like it. Maybe you do, you're gonna roll the dice. Ah, this is crazy. Old people don't think like that. They're rigid. And look, I don't wanna lump all the old people into one category. There's young old people and there's old young people, right? And, but it comes down to that curiosity and elasticity. We talk a lot about boundaries though. And this is where the two concepts can butt into each other and it can be hard to know which direction to go in. I think the way to have boundaries and elasticity to live in harmony is to set very specific goals. And here's where we're kind of gonna borrow from both ends of the spectrum. Old people have boundaries. That's the candy dish, you better wash your hands, right? They have a lot of fucking boundaries. Rigid people have boundaries. I mean, they have rules. I don't know if they have emotional boundaries. That's a whole other topic. You're gonna borrow a little bit of that. It's like, okay, okay. Aunt Sue, has that candy dish that for whatever reason you're not allowed to touch, even though it's candy and you'd think, but okay. What makes me uncomfortable? What is my emotional candy dish? Like, what do I not want people to infringe on? Maybe it's my like watching House of the Dragon time on Sunday night. That's a me time, all right? I'm gonna have a boundary. Maybe it's my financial goals. I'm trying to pay off my credit card this week, so I have 40 bucks to spend all weekend. How am I gonna spend it, okay? I want you to set goals and work backwards. Now we're gonna borrow from the young generation, the elasticity, the yes anding, right? Let's be up for anything. I am up for anything as long as it costs me under $40. But fuck it, what are we gonna do? What's our $40 weekend plan? Let's go buy some weird new clothes we've never tried. Let's eat at that Korean restaurant that we've never been in. Let's take a road trip, we'll put 40 bucks of gas in the car and we'll just drive to a different town. Let's just put a dart at the map, let's see what happens but you've still set a boundary for yourself. But because you have, you feel comfortable being elastic within that range. And if anything, you're going to ameliorate the anxiety of being young and shape-shifting. I need to be whoever anybody wants me to be. And that means, ha I spent $120 this weekend. <laughs> I'll think about it later, right? That's how I spent my youth, going above and beyond what I was comfortable with, what I could afford, what I wanted to eat, who I wanted to have sex with, because I was trying to fit in. And when we get old, it's rigid, 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 boundary, 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 I don't like this. Blah, 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 blah. What if we confuse the two? What if we can combine these two things? You know what that makes you? A cool ass adult. A cool ass adult. Let's compare Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez embodies this. She seems like she's got a lot of boundaries. My friend who was on Saturday Night Live, J-Lo was on one time. I was like, tell me everything. She's like, she's really nice, but she's like business. She's, she shows up, there's no chit chat. She's like, okay, like let's get down to it. She's, she's very pleasant, but she's like no nonsense. She runs a tight ship. She's a busy person and she commands a lot of respect as a result of that, you know? Like she has her boundary. Her boundary is her time. You know, there's no time to waste, like, oh, glad handing and small talk and wearing herself out and going over time. Nope, she's there to work. But she's really cool and fun. The time you get with her is cool and fun, but there is a limit to it. I'm like, damn. I think about that a lot because that's what I really strive to be. You know, in terms of work or anything, it's like, hey, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna be super present, but my time is my time. My efforts are my efforts. You get what you get, you know? Don't waste my time. Don't, don't try to take me outside of these boundaries I've set. But within this, within the walls of this house, within the walls of this fence, it's a great time. But there is a fence. So try to kind of think of it that way. And I know you're probably saying like, I thought this video was gonna be more about like, peptide serum and like how to like be young. Listen. It's no secret the world reacts better to attractive people. It's no secret, or it shouldn't be, nor should it be incendiary to say that if you take care of yourself and you're in good shape and you're attractive, the world is gonna react better to you. Do the most with what you got. Have two eyebrows, no mustache. There should be two of these and none of these. All the hair on your face, it should be right here. If you find it migrating down here, we got a problem. This is not ideal. So just try to, this is where we, this is the zone we want to stay in.
okay? You got it, you got it. I could tell you the basics, sunblock, lasers. I love a good laser, chemical peels. You know this shit though, you know this shit. Where it really happens is inside because look at Madonna, look at this bitch. Her skin, tight, tight, tight. Way better than mine, right? So on paper, she's doing everything right in terms of like looking young, but she's not because she's trying too hard. She's going too far to the other side. This does not seem like a woman to me who has a lot of boundaries. This seems like a woman who is shape shifting to be whatever she needs to get attention and to be liked. That's not it. That's not cute. That's not admirable. It's, it's not even sexy. It really isn't even sexy, you know? Like, if I was a guy, like, say I didn't even know how old she was, right? Like, say I didn't even know. If I looked at this, I'd be like, oof, this chick is just doing the most. Like, the most. Damn, there's no, there's no self-awareness. There's no self-deprecation. There's no learning. There's no curiosity. Madonna doesn't seem curious about anything except what will bring her attention. What will make her... What will enhance her like Gen Z cosplay that she's doing right now? Like, what does she do all day? Does she have a foundation? I know she had that weird NFT of her like birthing. I don't even know. It was like a 3D thing of her vagina. It's just so fucking bizarre. I mean, her stuff is even hashtagged, bitch, I'm Madonna. It's, I mean, I know, I, we know that. I know that I'm on your page, so. Listen, I guess I shouldn't shade that because I like make a pun out of every part of my name. Ugh, I have to put this down. I have to put this down. It's, it's just too much. It's just too much. So in sum, the answer to growing old gracefully, sunblock lasers, okay? Curiosity, giving back to others because you know what is so vivacious? You know what keeps you alive and present and growing? Gratitude for real deal gratitude. Madonna, how many followers does she have? I know, I have to stop. 18 million? I don't see her posting anything political except for pride. I think we're all good on gay right. And the gay, we all have the same right. We're, we're okay, okay? Like maybe since three of your kids are from what, Malawi? Maybe do some fundraising for people in Africa. It just, I know I always go back to this. It just makes me fucking crazy when people with this much clout and this much of a following do nothing with it except for ridiculous self-aggrandizement. Like you can't do a canned food drive. Like, you, you know, you can't do that. You can't do a GoFundMe, like highlight a different one every month. You could eradicate a social issue. No, because you are so focused on yourself. You are so incredibly focused on yourself. And truly we see this with the boomers, with the old folks and with the very young folks. It's me, 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 me. The old people because death is on the way and young people because they're so concerned with fitting in, they dare not step out, you know, and like focus on the needs of others. Like, and you know, that is that is psychologically true and it's, it's normal, which is why it stands out when you see kids like doing a lemonade stand to like benefit their schoolmate who has cancer or a teenager starting like a food drive. Like, wow, fuck, like that's not what the typical people are doing right now. But the cool ones are. But when you get older, you step outside of yourself. You literally just get sick of your own vanity. And you're like, what is? what am I here for? Like, what is this legacy? We're seeing Kim Kardashian going through that, becoming a lawyer, wanting to give back, wanting to do something beyond just take pictures. That's really cool. And I think that truly is a huge component to vivacity as you get older. Because look, when you can look around and be like, I got a pretty good, like I've got a pretty, is life perfect? No, there's some hardships, of course. But I, my problems are someone else's lottery win, right? Like the things I deal with, they're, they're my lottery win. The problems I have now, me from five years ago, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe that these get to be my problems. This is incredible. That mindfulness, that presence, it lights you up inside. That comes from the inside out. That is what youth is. I mean, truly, it helps your cells turn over. It lowers cortisol levels. It keeps belly fat away. It keeps your blood circulating. You're going to look hotter when you are more grateful. 
So let's try it. Let's start now. Also, if you're going to have doggy style sex, wear a bra because the back and forth can tear breast tissue. And a lot of times that's what leads to saggy boobs. True story. Okay. <laughs> For more, um, come back later. Like I said, join me in the Shalantourage. We've got a whole bunch of exclusive videos. And speaking of giving back, you guys know I forgot to mention this at the top of the video. We're raising money. Or actually, I'm helping a friend raise money. Her name is Jerry Beth, and she rescues animals in Venezuela. She pays out of pocket to get them surgery, find them homes, give food to people who have animals. You know, inflation down there is over 2,000%. And when societies start to collapse, the first things that suffer, like women, children, animals. So listen, we maybe can't fix the Venezuelan government. Socialism doesn't work, but we can help a few little snouts. So if you can spare $5, $10, it really means so much. It makes you feel so good. And Jerry Beth is using the money for surgeries, for adoption, for food. She's putting it to really good use. I'm gonna share more in a little bit, but we will be back next time. I'll see you later, Shalligators.